For this problem, we are asked to draw the shear and moment diagrams for a simply supported or beam with two cantilever ends uh, that's determinate, has distributed loading, and three point loads. And we're also going to use graphical techniques rather than determining the equations for shear and moment directly. So here we'll use the principles of what we know about calculus basically we're going to use calculus procedures integrating load to get shear integrating shear to get moment however we won't actually draw a single integral sign or write out an equation for this rather we'll calculate areas under curves and look at the rules for how to construct these diagrams in terms of uh, jumps at discrete point load locations and reactions and things along that lines so the first step would be to to find our reactions And this is not a difficult problem for us. Uh, <clears throat> to do that, we'll draw our free body diagram. And this free body diagram of the beam itself would have a, a reaction for R A Y. There would technically be an X reaction there, but we know it's a beam, so the X reaction would be zero. This would be our B Y. Suppose let's go here and put in some uh, some joint locations. This is joint A, and this would be joint B over there. <coughs> and we might as well put R A X is equal to zero there for completeness. We have our um, our point loads. We have fifty kilonewtons. 100 kilonewtons and 30 kilonewtons and beyond that we have our distributed loads that will result in uh, give us resultant forces at certain locations so we have FR1 and we'll draw a resultant for the span of uh, to the left of A a span between A and B and a span between uh, B and the end of the beam <coughs> we have FR2 and we have FR3. And let's put some dimensions on this free body diagram. We have 1.5, 1.5 meters. <clears throat> three meters, three meters, three meters. And beyond that, let's put on some values for um, locations of our resultant forces. Well, we have our first X bar one. We have x bar 2 and x bar 3. Now we've drawn these resultant forces in approximately their location, and um, by now we should know pretty well where they're going to be since this is a simple rectangular load and fairly accurately be able to draw them on our diagram. Nonetheless, let's calculate the values and their locations. FR1 is going to equal the area under this uh, load curve to the left of A. So it'll equal the magnitude, 6 kilonewton per meter, multiplied by the length of that curve, which is 3 meters. And this gives us FR1 is equal to 18 kilonewtons. We can find X bar 1 is simply equal to 3 meters over 2. It's the centroid of a rectangle is half the width of it. And this is 1.5 meters we can find FR2 and that's equal to the magnitude 6 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by the length over which it's applied between A and B is 6 meters if we multiply that out we get FR2 is equal to 36 kilonewtons X bar 2 is simply equal to 3 meters 
the distance between 0 and A plus the distance to the centroid of the rectangular load between A and B. So 3 meters plus 6 meters over 2. And this will be x bar 2 is equal to 6 meters. And F R 3 is equal to 6 kilonewton per meter multiplied by the width over which it's applied between B and the end. And this is F R 3 is equal to 18 kilonewtons. And finally, x bar 3 is equal to not our is equal to our 9 meters plus half the distance between B and the end. So 9 plus 3 over 2 is equal to x bar 3, which is 10.5 meters. Now at this point we're ready to solve for our <coughs> Are two reactions. Uh, if we want to be complete up here, let's put sum of forces in x is equal to zero, therefore Rax is equal to zero. Down here we can put sum of moments about a location is equal to zero. And I chose location A. Let's put our locations here as well. A and B. <coughs> sum of moments about A is equal to zero. So we'll be taking moments about that location there. To do that, we can just start plugging in our values. We have 50 times 1.5 going that way. So it's 50 kilonewtons times the location, or times its moment arm. And it's acting counterclockwise, which makes it a positive moment. Plus 18 times 1.5. So that's FR1 times its moment arm, acting positive. Minus 100 times 3. Now that's that point load in the middle of the beam. And it's rotating it, I'm trying to rotate it clockwise, which makes it a negative moment. Minus 36 times 3, and that's FR2, trying to rotate it the same way. Plus RBY times 6, our reaction at B, multiplied by its moment arm. Minus 30 times 9 is the uh, point load at the end of the beam, <coughs> which is trying to put a negative rotation on this. And finally, minus FR3, which is 18, times its moment arm is 7.5, which is also a negative moment. And all of that is equal to 0. So if we rearrange and solve for RBY, we can end up cal calculating RBY is equal to 118.5 kilonewtons. That, that's a positive value. So let's put plus here. So that's a reaction that's acting in the upwards direction. It, at location B. Now we can solve for the uh, the other unknown, which is R A Y, using sum of forces, or we could take sum of moments about a different point. But it's simpler for us to take sum of forces in Y and set that equal to zero. Therefore, if we add up all of our vertical forces, we have R A Y minus 50 minus 18, so minus the 50 point load minus F R 1 minus 100, minus 36, which is FR2, minus 30, minus 18, which is FR3, plus 118.5, which is RBY. And all of that is equal to zero. If we solve for RAY, we end up with a value of plus 133.5 kilonewtons acting in the up direction. <coughs> All right. So at this point, we're ready to go to our diagrams and begin drawing shear and moment. We'll start with the shear diagram, and we'll draw that to completeness. And at that point, we'll move on and draw the moment diagram. So for shear, we know that we have a free end. A free end has zero shear. So we're going to start at a value of zero. 
free end has zero shear. We have a load that's acting downwards. The distributed load results in a, or a uniformly distributed load results in a linear distributed shear diagram. A downwards uniformly distributed load results in a shear diagram that's acting downwards or moving downwards. We can find a value at the uh, point of our discontinuity, or 50 kilonewtons, of a shear of minus 6 times 1.5 is equal to minus 9. So what we did was found the area under this load curve at the point of 50 kilonewton application, and we know that it's linear. Area under load is shear. Now at that point we have a 50 kilonewton drop in load. So we're going to jump the load, or jump the shear, down by a magnitude of 50 kilonewtons. And then we can find the magnitude of the shear at the point on the right hand side of that point load at 1.5 meters. And this will be minus 9 minus 50 is equal to minus 59. Now we'll progress over to the other discontinuity at A by uh, finding the area under this curve, the load curve between the 50 and A, and adding it to the shear at the point where we're starting. So we can find minus 59 <coughs> minus 6 times 1.5, and that will equal to minus 68. And we know that the shear will be linear over that region since the, the uh, load is uniformly distributed. So we found the shear at this point here <coughs> of minus 68. Now at that point, we're going to take a jump. And the jump will be equal to RAY. So let's, uh, let's write our reaction forces here simplicity so that we can see it. RAY is equal to 135 or 133.5 kilonewtons. And RBY RBY is equal to 118.5 kilonewtons. So once we have those values known, we can treat them like we would a point load. It's a discontinuity at that location. So we take a jump in shear by 133.5. The magnitude of this jump is RAY. And this brings up, up us up to a value of 65.5, which is equal to minus 68 plus 133.5. And then we're going to progress down to a point. We're going to have linear shear over this uniformly distributed region. And we can take the value of shear here and subtract from it the area of the load curve to get the value of shear here. So we have 65.5 minus 6 times 3, and this is going to equal 47.5. At that location, we take a jump downwards in shear by 100. and we come down to a shear so this is a jump of 100 and we come to a shear of minus 52.5 and 52.5 is equal to 47.5 minus 100 the value of that shear minus our jump. And we'll progress over with a linear shear distribution to a value that is minus 70.5.
which is equal to minus 52.5 minus 6 times 3. So we'll calculate the area under the shear curve between this region and add to it the shear there with our correct signs. At this point we have a point load, a, sh a reaction force of 118.5 and this creates an upwards jump in the shear diagram. So we'll jump up by magnitude here of our by and our shear at this point is going to be 48 which is equal to minus 70.5 plus 118.5. We'll progress linearly all the way to a location over here where we have a shear of 48 minus 6 times 3 is equal to 30. And then we will have a jump in shear which brings us back to zero and the magnitude of that jump is 30 kilonewton point load. We end up at zero and we should end up at zero because we have a free end at that location and the free end can't take any shear. So the shear diagram is done and it's fairly simple to, uh, to calculate. <coughs> at this point we can go ahead with our moment diagram. Now the moment we will calculate the same way, except for now we're going to be looking at the shear diagram and the change in area under the shear will result in us being able to draw the moment diagram. So we'll, first we identify our points of discontinuity and those are shown on these lines. Each point of discontinuity will result in a change in slope in the moment diagram. We don't have any jumps in the moment diagram, a jump in the moment diagram occurs when we have a point source of moment, but we don't have any point sources of moment in this diagram. A point source of moment would be an externally applied point source or a fixed end reaction. <coughs> so instead we only have changes in slope. Rapid change, uh, a jump in shear, and if we think of the shear diagram as representing the slope of our moment diagram, a jump in the shear from a negative 68 to a positive 65.5 is a change in slope from a slope of minus 68, slope going downwards, to a slope of plus 65, a slope going upwards. So it's a discrete change in slope. Now our shear diagram at every point in this diagram is linear and we know that the moment has one degree higher order of curve than the shear. So the moment diagram at every point on this diagram will be parabolic. It will be parabolic with discrete locations of uh, equations for that curve. We're not calculating the equations, but nonetheless the uh, parabola from here to here will be a different curve than from here to here. However, they will share the boundaries. So the moment at this location for each curve will be the same. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll find it's quite simple. We need to calculate the area under this triangle to find the moment at this location. First off, we know the moment at the beginning is zero. It's zero because we have a free end, and a free end has zero moment. We will progress to a location. At this point here, at 1.5 meters over, we have a moment that's equal to the value of shear minus 9 times the length 1.5 over 2. In other words, the area under this triangle curve. And this is 6.75. So we will progress parabolically with a slope that is increasingly negative. So the slope starts at zero and it increases to a value of nine. So we're getting more and more negative. So we'll start at zero slope and get a larger and larger slope down to the value of 6.75. And now at 6.75 we're going to change our slope drastically. Our slope at this location was minus nine and then we're going to change it to minus 59. So our slope was here. <coughs> we had a slope at this location here. We had a slope, slope, 
is equal to minus 9. And then we're going to go to a slope of minus 59 at that location. And we will go down to a value here Well, we'll terminate at the curve at a value of minus 6.75. Let's put the minus sign up here where it belongs. Minus 6.7. There's one here too. 6.75 plus the area under this curve. The area under that trapezoid is simply minus 59 minus 68 over 2 multiplied by the length. And this is going to equal a value of minus 102. So we're calculating the total cumulative area from 0 to this point, and that's the shear here. Now we're taking a change in slope. We're going from a slope of minus 68 here to a slope of plus 65. So we're going to be increasing in shear parabolically until we reach a value. And all of these, this curve is um, <coughs> it has a positive slope, so it's starting upwards and that slope decreases from 65.5 to 47.5. So here we can say we, we if we wanted to draw our slope on there, we had a slope, I'm not sure in black, we had a slope, a slope of uh, of minus 68, or sorry, a slope of plus 65.5, it's minus 68 on the other side there, of plus 65.5, and we transition to a slope here of 47.5. So we have a smaller slope. That means our curve is curving downwards. The value of, sh of moment at this location, let's find that here, and we'll take minus 102 plus the area under this trapezoid. 65.5 plus 47.5 over 2 times the length from here to here is 3. And this will equal to 67.5. So, we have a shear, or sorry, a moment here of 67.5. And we will progress with a slope now that is negative 52.5 increasing in slope to minus 70.5. So negative 52.5 increasing in slope to minus 70.5. And then the value of moment at the location here will be 67.5 the value of moment here plus the area under the shear curve to this point. That will be 67.5 plus 52, minus 52.5, minus 70.5 over 2 times 3. And this is going to equal to minus 117. And then finally we will progress with a positive 48 slope, decreasing in slope to 30 by the time we hit the end. And we know the moment at the end has to equal 0, 
but also we can calculate it to make sure. So we'll start with the uh, slope of 48 and decrease this to a slope of 30 by the time we hit 0. And we can say that this is found to be minus 117 plus 48 minus 30 over 2 times 3 and that's equal to 0. So at this point we finished our moment diagram. We found the moments at discrete locations. 0, minus 6.75, 102, 67.5, 117, 0. It, is, uh, it might be interesting for us to find a couple other values here. So let's find two more things. Let's find the distance between the support and where moment is 0, and let's call that x1. And we'll find the distance between the support B and the location where moment is 0, x2 there. We can find that <coughs> by uh, some simple calculations. So if we want to find x1, and this is equal to the distance from A to zero moment, let's look at our shear diagram. And we would see that we would have a shear diagram over a region. from location A, so if this is support A here, and this the shear at this point is 65.5, and we have a distance x1 and a total length 3 meters to a point where we know the shear of 47.5. So if we just draw this trapezoid here. Now, we started with a moment of minus 102, and we progress to 0, and then to 67.5. At 0, at x1, we can say that the area under the shear diagram is equal to 102 kilonewton meters. So we're adding enough moment to this to get us back to zero. And we can say that area is e of a trapezoid is h1 plus h2 over 2 times the length of the trapezoid. And h1 is 65.5. And h2 is going to be the value of shear at that point. Well, that will be equal to 65.5 minus 6 kilonewton per meter times x. So the equation for the uh, slope of this, or for this line, will be 65.5 minus the slope times x. And we know the slope is our load curve. So if we plug in the values, and we can also say L is equal to x1. Plug this in, we have 102 is area, is equal to 65.5 plus 65.5 minus 6x1 over 2 times x1. If we multiply this out, we can end up, let's move over here, we get 102 is equal to 65.5x1 minus 3x1 squared. And then if we rearrange this, we can get uh, Rewrite this as 3x1 squared minus 65.5x1 plus 102 is equal to 0. Now we have a quadratic equation. We can say that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Therefore x1 is equal to negative b, which is negative negative 65.5, plus or minus the root 
of minus 65.5 squared minus 4 onto 3 onto 102 for AC. So that's A, B, C. There should be a 1 there. And all of this is over 2A. And this gives us X1 is equal to 10.917 plus or minus 9.229. So X1 is equal to 1.688 meters or 22.146 meters. Now we know that it has to be this value here because 22.416 is outside of the bounds of this diagram. So <clears throat> that means that at a location of 1.688 meters from support A, we have zero moment. Let's look at um, finding x2. And this is equal to the distance from B to zero moment. So we can draw a similar diagram for the shear diagram between um, B and that 100 kilonewton point load. And we would see we'd have diagram here <clears throat> so this would be location B and we would have a couple of values we would have let's give ourselves couple things here. So we would have our value x2 that we're looking for. Let's also write x3 over here and the whole distance is 3. We start at minus 52.5. We end up with minus 70.5. And now let's work. We're interested in finding this to here the distance between 0 and minus 117 is equal to the area under a segment of that trapezoid. Now we could find it that way or instead we could find the distance between 67.5 and 0 is equal to area under this trapezoid. And it will be simpler for us to find the left hand side because we're working with an x increasing from left to right. So let's find this area here. Let's call that area. And let's find the area such that it is equal to minus 67.5. So by the time we get negative 67.5 area in this curve, we end up with uh, shear is equal to 0. And then we can find the x3 value and then subtract 3, x, 3 minus x3 and find x2. <coughs> so we can first say that... Um, x2 is equal to 3 minus x3. So let's find uh, area is equal to minus 67.5 and we know that this is equal to h1 plus h2 over 2 times x3. So minus 67.5 is equal to minus 52.5 plus minus 52.5 minus 6x3 <clears throat> using the same uh, equation for the for the height 2 so we can find height 2 here is 52.5 minus x3 times the slope so this value here is h3 is equal to minus 52.5 minus 6 kilonewtons per meter times x3 which is what we have there. 
all of that's divided by 2, and to that we're multiplying x3. And if we solve, or if we expand this and collect like terms, we'd get 3x3 squared plus 52.5x3 minus 67.5 is equal to 0. If we plug that into our quadratic equation and solve for x3, we'd end up with x3 is equal to minus 52.5, so minus b plus or minus the root of 4a, or b squared minus 4ac. b squared is 52.5 squared minus 4 onto 3 onto minus 67.5. <coughs> all over 2a. And we'd end up with x3 is equal to <coughs> minus 8.75 plus or minus 9.953. And this would give us x3 is equal to 1.0, oh, sorry, not 1.0, 1.203 meters or minus 18.703 meters. So we know that x3 has to be this value of minus 1.02 meters, 1.203 meters rather than minus 18 because minus 18 is outside of the bounds of that shape. And this gives us x2 is equal to 3 minus 1.203 meters. So x2 is equal to 1.797 meters. <coughs> so this means that between location of support B and zero moment, we have 1.797 meters. And at that point, we've defined pretty much everything we need to for this moment diagram. Now let me say something about what this looks like here. This has an awful lot of stuff on the diagram and you wouldn't be expected to provide all of this on the diagram. In fact, you'd be expected to, to provide a cleaner diagram than this with your calculation showing up elsewhere. You'd want to report the value of shear here, 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 the jumps, the values of shear at the discontinuities. But you wouldn't necessarily need to have the equations on that shear diagram because it does become quite difficult to read. And the same with the moment. We report the moment at this discontinuity, the moment at this location here, the moment here, the distance to zero moment, the maximum and minimum moments elsewhere. So, but not the calculations themselves. That would take place at a different location. However, for this teaching example, they took place right on the diagram to show you what was happening. <coughs>